Welcome to our seasonal update. The Central Tablelands Local Land Services Ag Team has put together information from soil moisture probes, weather data and pasture modelling to give producers an understanding of their seasonal risks and talk through some of the options to consider on their place. The next three months uh, we know is a critical time for this area in the Central Tablelands. We know that we rely on our spring break right across the Central Tablelands. Um, what we've really seen in the pasture growth models and also our moisture probes is that uh, moisture is limiting in a, in a proportion of our area. What I would say to people and looking at some of the rainfall data and some of the information that we get off these probes is that, you know, we're seeing a lack of rainfall, uh, runoff rainfall, effective rainfall. Um, and, and that really is having a flow on effect to the stock water. So what I would say to people is get out, actually have a look at your stock water if you're relying on dams and the like, see where that's sitting. Also, the other thing that people really need to be doing is planning for the next three months. Think about the physiological state of your animals. Do you have used lambing, cows calving? Um, you know, look at the management options. Do we look at early weaning? Um, really with limited pastures in some areas, that's one of the, the key tools that I'd be looking at. The other thing would be looking at maybe bringing some of these animals into some paddocks and looking at confinement feeding. A lot of the questions we've been getting in the last few weeks have been around protein supplementation. It is definitely an option for your, for your cow herd, um, but we tend to find with sheep with the ability to select a better digestible pasture than what we can cut and the ability to find green that, that we tend not to see that protein supplementation working quite as well. I really would be getting out and doing assessments of your animals, looking at the condition of those animals and, and letting that be your guide. If we start to see cows start to drop in, in, in fat and uh, sheep drop their condition scores, well, that's really a time to trigger some activity and, and, and set some of these plans in motion. Unfortunately, we've had some frost damage in a number of crops. I really would be suggesting that people sit down and do their sums, look at the option, is it worthwhile putting animals on, on these failed crops or should you actually be baling and making hay? Hay demand at the moment is quite, quite high, but we will see a lot of hay come on the market in the next three months. Sit down and do your sums, seek some professional advice as to what, what's going to be the best option. The Central Tablelands has nine sites measuring soil moisture, weather conditions and rainfall. Sites in the south and southwest of our region are showing good soil moistures. This is coming through in our modelling with good pasture growth. However, it is important to monitor your soil moisture levels as it could decline quite quickly as temperatures increase. There are three regions in the central tablelands that are showing deficiencies in rainfall and soil moisture. We're gonna focus on them in our update and go through Sodwells, Cumnock, and here in Golgong. The lack of easterly rainfall systems has led to a lower than average rainfall in the Sodwells area to the east of our region. The past five months had 78 millimetres to date. This is only 25% of the 30 year average of 315 millimetres. So what does this soil moisture mean for the pasture growth in the Sodwells region? The pasture growth on historic data for Sodwells shows that in 50% of the last 30 years, which is shown on the graph through the 50 percentile, yellow coloured line on the graph, the green herbage is forecasted to be 1500 kilograms per hectare in early December. However, if we change the pasture growth model to use the Access S button, that adjusts pasture forecast green herbage mass according to the BOM forecasts, the 50 percentile yellow line drops significantly, down to zero green kilograms per hectare by mid-December. Based on forecasts for this area, producers with these highly erodible soils need to consider ground cover. The Cumnock Access S pasture growth forecast for green herbage mass is actually dropping to zero indicating no more green herbage growth as early as the first week of November. Soil moisture is a major factor here, with only 21% at the 60 centimetre mark in the soil profile. This could be due to the loosen in, the, in this pasture, drawing on soil moisture, but rainfall is also a factor. Given that the last rainfall event over 10 millimetres in this area was back in March this year. So the Golgong site 
where we're filming today, has received 175 millimetres of rainfall from March to September. This is only 56% of the 30 year average of 309 millimetres for this region. Although we're looking at quite low rainfall at the moment, if we do see st summer rains and storms in this area, the summer growing perennial grasses will bounce away quickly, especially given the soil temperature is already stable and rising at 14 degrees. Make use of our farming forecast website. It's a great resource for producers. It really has some useful information to help you make practical decisions. Also, we will be giving these updates regularly. Our next update is in December. Look forward to catching up to you then. Cheers.